Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. So we're going to have a look at the ECDF 30 day model for today's first video. Looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the UK and for the rest of Europe for the next uh, four weeks. So that's going to take us through pretty much to the last stages of the uh, June. So I'll get off of Get on that for you very shortly. Uh, just to say that coming up later on, we'll have your regular week standard video today, including all of the usual features. And uh, that'll be with you later on this afternoon. We're at the Hungarian Met Office. So this one's a big thank to them for supplying us uh, with charts. We can't show mean seal of pressure or 500 millibar heights with this, unfortunately. But uh, we can show you the temperature and precipitation. Obviously, you can get a rough idea often about what the overall pattern will be doing. Right, so let's start off, and we're going to begin with the uh, week one temperature anomaly for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. It's week 22 for the year. The year's getting on now, uh, 25th to 31st of May. Proper east-west split going on here across Europe. So for much of northern and western Europe, we are significantly warmer than average. And that includes sort of North Africa going up into Spain and Portugal, through France into the UK and Ireland, northwards to Iceland, and then over to Scandinavia. Most places coming out with above average temperature. And normally it's anything from around 1 to 6 degrees, actually, uh, above average. And warmest and normalist average for the UK, Ireland, western parts of France and down Spain and Portugal. Little area of North Africa there, uh, showing uh, temperatures up to 6 to 10 degrees above average. However, completely different story on the other side of Europe, on the east side of Europe, really from around East Germany eastwards, it's significantly colder than average. Widely, we see temperature anomalies going down to uh, around 3 to 6 degrees below average. So, uh, yes, we've got a really cold temperature anomaly here from like southern Poland and Ukraine heading down to the Black Sea, to the Balkans, I and mean, then even extending the far south as Greece and Turkey significantly below average temperature anomalies there. The Mediterranean also showing this east-west divide, so uh, really from Italy westwards, it's a warmer than average sea through most of the Mediterranean, back to Spain and Portugal, from Italy eastwards, down to Greece and Turkey, and also places like Cyprus. Again, it's a colder than average sea, or a cooler than average sea through the eastern portion of the Mediterranean. Precipitation-wise, uh, for week one, 25th uh, to 31st of May, we look like this. So it's wetter than average to the north of Black Sea and up to southwestern parts of Russia. Some parts of the Mediterranean, uh, generally on the drive and average side, except around Greece, where it's a bit wetter than average there. Uh, but heading further north, was most parts of Europe actually driving out, so dominated by high pressure, particularly in these northern and west parts of Europe, which again does include Ireland and the UK. Uh, we see significantly driving average conditions in the weekend. So high pressure is bringing not only very warm weather, it's also bringing uh, dry weather to many northern and western parts of Europe for this final week of uh, May. So low pressure is over on the eastern side of Europe where uh, we've got those colder than average, cooler than average temperatures. The week two temperature anomaly from the 1st to the 7th of June uh, looks like this. So still indicate a bit of an east-west split, really. Uh, many northern western parts of Europe again uh, coming out warm and average. Many parts of Scandinavia, for example, warm and average up towards the Baltic Sea and Baltic States. Warm and average there. Ireland, UK, France, uh, low countries just to the west of Germany. Again, we're talking about temperature anomalies of around 1 to 3 degrees above average. Eastern and southeastern parts of the Mediterranean are slightly uh, below average through those areas. Not as cold as it is in week one. Nevertheless, that's where the coldest temperature anomalies are on this eastern and southeastern side of Europe, with anomalies, anomalies generally around 1 to 3 degrees below average. Uh, through Mediterranean, so these western and southwestern parts of Med are a little bit cooler than average, southeast parts of Med also a little bit cooler than average. Central basin of the Mediterranean is a little bit warmer uh, than average through there of around 1 to 3 degrees. Precipitation wise for week two, uh, we look like this. Going go wetter than average in this southwestern part of Europe, quite interesting. Uh, Spain, Portugal, down to southern parts of France, or up to some parts of France. It's a bit wetter than average through there, like through the Cote d'Azur. And um, perhaps a bit on the wetter than average side through the central basin of the Mediterranean, too, including the holiday islands of Mallorca, Minorca, and Ibiza. And I suppose that could be down to heavy showers and thunderstorms coming through there. Further north, was it's driving average from Ireland and the UK over towards 
was uh, the uh, the Low Countries, Belgium, Holland, again uh, up to Denmark through Germany. Those areas and also some parts of Norway and Sweden. All those areas look like they're probably still dominated by high pressure. Then we have no signal reef from many eastern parts of Europe until we've run into some slightly wetter conditions from the Black Sea up to southwestern parts of Russia. So it's near normal for uh, precipitation on the eastern side of Europe, probably still a little bit showery, wetter than average for Spain and Portugal, drier than average goes on for uh, northwestern parts of uh, Europe in week two. Week 3, which is week 24 for the year, takes us from the 8th to the 14th of June, and uh, we look like this. So the signal for the temperature anomaly is weakening uh, now. If anything, maybe it's going to go a little bit cooler than average, just a little bit cooler than average in the far northwest of Europe. So somewhere around the UK, Denmark, uh, maybe the low countries, southern parts of, uh, of Norway, Possibly hints at just being a little bit on the cooler average side for you there. Also looking a bit cooler than average through Spain and Portugal, or the interior of Spain and Portugal. Otherwise, again, we've got lots of white going on here, which is no signals. I think as we get through to the middle part of June, the model is beginning to lose a signal for what's happening. But it looks like the sort of east-west split that we've had through weeks one and two, with the west being warm, the east being cool, it looks like that's sort of fading out as we go through to the middle of June. So maybe we're starting to see a bit of a pattern change taking place here. Something a little bit cooler in the north and the west, perhaps a little bit warmer in the east, who knows. Uh, precipitation wise again very weak signals uh, for week 3 as well Ireland and the UK look slightly on the dry on average side looking slightly on the wet on average side Spain and Portugal possibly around Bay of Biscay as well some of these eastern parts of Europe also looking uh, slightly wetter than average. Otherwise, again, there's lots of white going on, lots of no signals. So I don't think the model has got a particularly good handle on what's happening here from the 8th through to the 14th of June. I think the model is struggling to uh, ascertain the signal. And we go through to week four, week 25 of the year. Week four for our forecast period takes us from the 15th through to the 21st of June. It does look a little bit warmer than average on the west side of Europe again. So France in particular is going to around 1 to 3 degrees above average. England and Wales again going to around uh, 1 to 3 degrees above average in some areas. Looks like Spain and Portugal possibly warming up a little bit there. Also in the very, very far northeast of uh, Europe also a little bit warmer than average through those areas. Otherwise, again, we see lots of white taking place here. Lots of no signal. I think as we get through to the middle of June and beyond, the model is uh, struggling this way to ascertain signal. Now we see this again from precipitation anomalies from the 15th to 21st of June. Overall, it looks like there's very, very weak signals for most areas. It's a little bit drier out to the west of the UK and Ireland. It's a little bit drier than average few parts of Germany, maybe perhaps a bit wetter than average up towards Scandinavia. But again, these are such weak signals that we can't really ascertain uh, a great deal. So I think we say that uh, for weeks three and four, the model is struggling uh, you know, it is really struggling today to, to, to see what happens if we get to mid-June into the second half of the month. But before that, we're looking at quite a lot of, uh, of dry and warm weather on the western side of Europe. It looks a lot cooler on the eastern side uh, of Europe. And then maybe it's dealing with some sort of flip on that as you get through to the middle of the month. And that explains the, the very weak signals from the middle of June onwards. Uh, it's all just a snapshot of what Molly is showing. So it could all look very, very different uh, next week. Um, so uh, we'll just see what Molly has to say uh, next week. Any forecast beyond five, seven days, as we say, is fraught with uh, health warnings. Uh, right then, so you'll get back later on with your week to 10 day video update. So come back for that then. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.